This is the HPT. Sit right down, put on your poker face, you with the big dogs now. Better bring your best game, talk trash all you want. To me, it's all the same, you won't leave with much when you come in second place. I'm the one with the stack showing seven to the jack Gonna cry to your mama cause I'm sending you back I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand Last man standing with the money in my hand I'll be the last man standing with the money in my hand Hello everyone and welcome to the HPT. I'm James Larson joined by professional poker player Mr. David Williams. Tonight we have our conclusion from the Thunder Valley Casino Resort. We will crown a champion and that person will go home with just under $160,000. Based on what we saw last time, any of these six could be the champion. I'm excited to see there should be lots of action at the table. Yeah, buckle up. It's going to be fun tonight on the HPT. Let's go down and meet the players and find out what they're playing for. As we look at the cash we're playing for tonight, the minimum right now just over 26000 But up top, everybody wants to be our newest HPT champion, but most importantly, you go home with just under $160,000. As you can see from our chip counts, Ricky and Nick are in the lead with about 3 million chips, but it's still anyone's game. One double up will put Michael right back in the mix among the chip leaders. So the blinds are 40,000, 80,000 with a 10K ante. Like I said, Thunder Valley Casino Resort. We're right outside of Sacramento, California. I want to thank Ben Irwin, the director of poker operations, for having the HPT back to this premier property. The action will start with the five seat of Mike, and he looks down at Pocket Jacks. A good way to start tonight's show. He's going to raise it under the gun to 180,000 with his jacks. Action's on Rick. We haven't seen Rick play many hands. He played the queens, he played the kings, and now he's all in. Well, this time he's got eight. So he's every time he's been in a hand, he's had a pocket pair. This time it's pocket eights as he three-bet shoves. And now action over to Mike with his pocket jacks, and he's got to probably make this call, right, David? Yeah, I mean, as you can tell, he's obviously thinking about it because Rick has played pretty tight, and it's not something that you love when you have two jacks. But I think when it's down to six-handed poker, you can't really fold jacks now for an all-in. So Mike with his pocket jacks is going to make the call, and Rick is going to see that he is dominated right now. His eight's right, going Mike's up against Mike's call, pocket jack. Pocket Rick jacks, pocket all jacks in for his tournament eights. life. Flop is and the flop four is five, diamonds, four, diamonds, four deuce, five couple of diamonds. The, Frankie, let's see the, turn card. the jack's in the lead. Rick could catch running cards turn for card a straight or hit of one of the remaining so eights. The now the turn Rick card is the five of clubs. So now, David, it's down to two outs for Rick. He's looking for an eight or an eight. Frankie, let's see the river card. It is an eight on the And the river card is the eight of hearts. Wow. Unbelievable. They're both shocked. Look at Mike. I mean, neither player stood up during that all in. Unbelievable. Rick says unbelievable. Well, you just won. Full Three. house. Eight One full out. of fives. The double up complete. Now, if you go back to last week, he played two hands last week. Won both of them. Both pocket pairs. Wow. This time, his pocket pair turns into a full house. And when we come back, we'll have more exciting final table action. Hey, guys. This is Trishel Canatella coming to you from Thunder Valley Casino Resort. So the first thing I like to do whenever I check into a hotel room is check out my suite. This suite is absolutely beautiful. I'm going to go ahead and sit back and relax and I'll see you guys after the break. Welcome back to the HPT. James Larson and David Williams broadcasting from just outside of Sacramento, California, here at the Thunder Valley Casino Resort. And looking at the chip counts there, Rick on top, but Ricky right behind him. Mike is our short stack with about five big blinds. He's going to have to make a move soon if he wants to stay in this tournament. Six players remain. They all want to be our newest HPT champion, the title, and just under 160000 By the way, second place is 97 and change. Third place, 64676 Fourth place, 44968 and 33656 for fifth. Nick's going to raise with a very popular hand, just like last week, King, Queen of Spades, and he's going to raise to 200000 Mike, our short stack, finds two aces on the button. Exactly what you're looking for when you're short. Wow, he's got to love this. 
A three bet shove now with the pocket aces. Now we're on Ricky. Ricky's in the big blind. Ricky's going to get involved. Wow, he sure is. The size of the raise wasn't much more than the original raise. So you're going to see Nick call with King Queen suited also. Mike is in great shape to triple up. Three players in this hand. Aces going up against the Ace-10 and King-Queen. Mike is all in. And the flop is Queen-9 Trey. Couple of hearts. So Ricky's going to check over to Nick. Nick, as you can see, pairs his queen on the flop. Nick has to bet here. Even though there is no side pot, you don't want to allow Ricky to catch up and beat your hand just because another guy is all in. So Nick's going to bet 280,000. Ricky's going to fold, and then Nick's going to get the bad news that he's up against the aces, and he's down and needing a king, a queen, or running straight. So Mike trying to win this hand and continue his hopes to be our new HPT champion. Mike Riddle, 31 years old, over 100,000 in lifetime earnings. He's from Elk Grove, California. Turn card now is the Deuce of Spades. So a king and a queen is what Nick is looking for. Otherwise, Mike's going to win this hand. The river card is the four of diamonds, and Mike is going to win the hand. Mike owns an online shoe business. It's hotkicks.com, and as a, as a young man, he was a magician growing up as a kid. You know a magician too, don't you? Uh, there are quite a few magicians in poker, but the most famous would be Antonio Esfandiari, who I don't think practices magic anymore, except for making his opponent's chips disappear. Right, yeah, he does a lot of that, we see, on the final tables that Antonio is involved with. It's James Larson and David Williams as we come to you from the Thunder Valley Casino Resort. Down to only six players left at this final table. The action is on Mike, who just won a big hand there with his pocket aces. Now he looks down at the other end of that, pocket deuces. Wow, and he's all in with his pocket deuces. Rick folds over to Ricky now. It's like an ace-queen for Ricky. Almost certainly going to call. He's shown that he's called with much worse, such as ace-10. And I believe in the last episode, he called with an ace-6. Last time we were here, Ricky placed third place, so he's no stranger to this nationally televised final table here from Lincoln, California at the Thunder Valley Casino Resort. And it looks like Ricky is going to make the call. It doesn't look like he wants to make the call. He's kind of got his hands in his head. He's looking down. So it's folded around, so we're going to flip the cards over, and it's two big overs going up against Mike's pocket deuces. Never feels good when you're all in with deuces and getting called. So Mike stands up as he's trying to double up this hand. Got to fade aces or queens, and right there, bam, the flop comes queen for Trey. So Ricky outflops Mike. Just a bad feeling when you've got your tournament life at risk. Never feels good when you move all in with deuces and get called. Turn card now is the king of spades. So for Mike, he's looking for one of the remaining two deuces left in the deck or he will be eliminated in sixth place. And the river card is not a deuce. It's the six of diamonds. That's going to do it for Mike Riddle, 31-year-old from Elk Grove, California adding to his already $100,000 career lifetime earnings. Tonight he's going home with just yeah, over $26,000. Yeah, that's me. You play well. Right. Action continues here from Thunder Valley. Blinds are $40,000, $80,000 with a 10 k ante. It's James Larson and David Williams. You know, David, for some of these players, they may never get to play on national television again. So it's kind of a big deal for these guys to play under the hot lights. But out of all your experiences in pokers and, and the wins and the losses, what would be your most memorable moment on the felt? Well, that would have to be when I won the 2010 WPT World Championship. Uh, that was just such a great event. And to finally have, you know, that big title after the second place in the main event of the World Series years earlier, you know, it was like a relief. I finally felt like I had kind of proven myself. Not like I needed to prove myself to anyone else, but just to me. 
you know, I finally felt like I had accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. Flop is six, Trey, Deuce, it's Nick and Tom. You know, you talk about that second place finish, and I kind of forgot about it. You know, and this was uh, 2003 or 2004? 2004. 2004. Greg Raymer won that year, but man, you finished second in the main event. How many people can say that? No, no, I think only uh, about 46 or 47 or <laughs> right. so, something like that. But, no, I mean, it is, uh, you know, it's a great accomplishment, but I definitely feel that uh, winning a tournament, even though the prize money was a lot less and the stage was a lot smaller, getting first place in a tournament feels a lot better than getting second in any tournament because as a poker player, it's not really about the amount won when you're playing tournaments. Just getting first place, just nothing feels sweeter. Nick checks over to Tom, but if I remember right that year, second place paid, I'm going to just guess here, 3.4, 3.5 million? Three and a half million. Wow, that's a fun, that's a fun check to take to your local branch of your Wells Fargo office, perhaps. All right, Tom's going to bet 285,000. They've both got a pair of sixes. Tom has the best kicker and a spade draw. Nick has a straight draw. Pot size of just over 1 million chips. Only five players remain here at this final table. The river card now is the Ace of Diamonds. Action is on Nick in the one seat. Looks like Nick is going to take the initiative and lead out. Kind of interesting bet. If I'm Tom, I'm wondering what, what hands was he just calling me down with that had an Ace in it? I don't know if I would believe this bet. It's a bet of 230,000 chips into a pot that was, you know, just over a million. I guess I'll pay you and look at this. He's going to make the call, and he's going to turn over his card to see that he's the winner of the hand. Yeah, if you heard him, he did say, I'll pay you off as he pays. I mean, that when you make a bluff like this on the river, you have to make sure that your bet makes sense. You have to be selling a story that plays out over each step of the hand, and your opponent has to believe that story. This story didn't make any sense, and Tom wisely called and won the pot. And the story will continue after this quick commercial break. You're watching the HPT. Welcome back to the HPT. It's James Larson and professional poker player David Williams. We broadcast this week from Thunder Valley Casino Resort. There is the chip counts. Only five players remain. Michael's still the short stack with only 700,000. He's got nine big blinds and he's going to have to start making a move now to catch up with the other stacks if he wants to be a factor in this event. So we started with nine. We're down to five. Let's talk about hand range. Does the hand range change from nine to five and how drastic is it, David? Well, it's pretty drastic. I mean, at nine handed, you should be playing fairly tight letting other people knock themselves out. Down to five, you got to start opening up your game and really trying to accumulate chips so that you can, you know, take down the tournament. Now look at Rick. We saw this last week. I want to say he played three hands last week, two hands last week. Pocket pairs every time. This time he gets into the pot again with pocket kings, and he's going to raise to 180,000. Nick has been our most active player at this table. He defends his big blind. He's got suited connectors. And the flop is A64 Rainbow. Nick's going to check over to Rick. Rick bets out 300,000 chips. Now, I'm not, I'm not really sure I like this bet too much against a player like Nick with kings and ace on the board because if you get check raised, which Nick is likely to do with lots of hands that have draws, that don't have draws, you're going to have to really make a decision what you want to do with these kings and how you like it. Luckily, Nick did not check raise, so now Rick can proceed with caution now that he's been called. And the turn card now is the queen of spades. If you're Rick with two kings, so you're not really concerned with the queen, it's unlikely that made Nick two pair or a set. Nick checks over to Rick now. Rick bets a half a million. It's a pretty strong bet. You know, with the ace on the board, you have to assume for your opponent to call, he's either got an ace or he's going to be afraid of the ace and he might fold. So you're not really going to get a lot of worse hands to call. And when you do get called, you're going to be beat. And Nick is going to fold, so the winner of the hand is Rick. A true success story here on the HPT. He's a retired school teacher, 66 years old. He's only got $300 invested in the tournament. All right, the blinds are 50000 a 100000 with a 10 k ante. It's James Larson and professional poker player David Williams as we broadcast from the Thunder Valley Casino Resort. Trying to crown our newest HPT champion. We keep talking about the money because it's pretty impressive. Just under 160,000. Action now on the ninth seat of Michael. And he's short stacked, David. He's going to get them all in. 
Yeah, when you're in the small blind there and you're that short, you're pretty much shoving with anything. 8-9 is fine. It's going to be hard to, you know, the big blind to have a hand that has you really crushed. As witnessed, the uh, big blind does have ace-deuce, but by having a card under the 8-9, he only really has 60% equity, so he's still not in that bad of shape. Ace one time. The flop is 10-9-4, couple of diamonds, so Michael Pears is 9. Now he's in the lead, and Nick is going to need an ace. Turn. turn card now is the six of hearts, so Michael in good shape here to double up. And the river is the five of hearts. So Michael, a little sigh of relief there. A little fist pump too over to Rick, and he's not going anywhere as he wins that hand and will double up. Keep his tournament hopes alive. Unfortunately, he was so short to start the hand, his double up only leaves him with still about 10 big blinds, and he's going to have to do some more doubling. Back to Michael, we always ask best and worst thing that's ever happened to you. He said his worst was his parents losing their house to a fire one month after he got out of the Marines, but the best was meeting and marrying his beautiful wife, Jennifer, and they're expecting their third child in just a few months. So congratulations to Michael and his wife, Jennifer. Action now on Tom. Tom West, 31 years old. Self-proclaimed catering guru. He's got queens. Raises it up to a quarter million. Now over to Rick, who's picked up a little steam here at this final table. He's going to three bet now to pocket nines. I've never seen Rick play any hand but a pocket pair. And when he plays them, he plays them strong. He doesn't call. He comes in firing. Action over to Tom. And I think the players know this, too. They've seen the cards of Rick, and he's always put down the winner. They've always been pocket pairs. Tom's thinking, could he have kings here? Could he have aces? He's all in. And Rick makes the call. He's not as happy this time, David. Yeah, but there's nothing he could do with the stack sizes here. You know, Tom only had about ten big blinds. You're not folding nines for ten big blinds, so... It's unfortunate for Rick that he's up against a bigger pair, but now he needs a little bit of that luck he's had already. And the flop is 10-6 Trey, couple of clubs. So Tom in good shape here for the double up. Rick's gonna need some help. That's not doing it there, 10 of spades. Both players with two pair. Little smile there from Tom. Rick needs one of the last remaining nines in the deck. Let's see the river. So for Rick. Just one of the two nines that are left in the deck. And that's not one of them, the jack of diamonds. So queens and tens, the winning hand for Tom. He's going to double up here at this final table from Thunder Valley Casino Resort in Lincoln, California. James Larson and David Williams. With that double, Tom has got a pretty healthy stack. About 35 big blinds, which is plenty to work with. Five-handed at this final table. So, David, we talked about this last week, your World Series of Poker Bracelet, not in Hold'em or Omaha, but instead seven-card stud. So uh, is that your game of choice? Is that, was, that a, was that a fluke? What happened? Well, I, I would say at the time it was a fluke. I didn't have much experience in seven-card stud. I'd done a little practicing. I you know, read a few chapters and books on it, talked to some friends. But I uh, would say I really didn't know what I was doing now that I think I'm quite the stud player. So the results that I'm looking for haven't come since. So I guess, you know, ignorance is bliss. Michael's all in now with his Jack-10, folded around to that man, the one seat of Nick. He's 32 years old from the Ukraine. He's got $160,000 in lifetime earnings. He makes the call with a suited-up A6. Tom folds. Rick doesn't have a pair, so he's obviously folding. And it's Nick going up against Michael. Michael all in for his tournament life view with Jack-10. He is behind to the ace of Nick. Michael only had six big blinds to start that hand, which is why Nick was able to call with the suited ace here. It's not wise to normally call all ins with an ace and a middle card, but when, a, when your opponent only has six big blinds, you don't really have a choice. Flop is nine, Trey Deuce. So Michael needs some help here, otherwise he's gonna be eliminated in fifth place. Turn card now is the Trey of Spades. So now we're down to Michael needing either a jack or a 10. Otherwise, that will do it. And the river card is the king of hearts. 
And that is going to do it for Michael. He has been eliminated, going out in fifth place with $33,656. One player's dream of winning an HPT title has just ended, but it still remains for four at this final table. We'll get back to the action after the break. This is the HPT coming to you this week from Thunder Valley Casino Resort in beautiful, sunny Lincoln, California. James Larson, David Williams. And we look at the chip counts, only four players remain. And I think all four of these players have been playing great. I think Nick has been the most active. And I would look to see him continue that trend. I think Rick is going to have to pick it up and start playing some more hands because you can't wait on a pocket pair every time. Our next person eliminated going home with a nice payday, just under 45000 Third place is 64,676. Second place, now this is just awesome money. Just under 98,000, but up top, your champion, the title, and just under 160,000. And when you get this close, you, you really, second place isn't good. Third place, you want to win this, don't you, David? Well, for me, I prefer titles. So, <laughs> right. you know, if the money were switched between second and first, I would still try my hardest to get first, because I like to be the champion. Flop is six, five, Trey. Action on Ricky. Both players have a straight draw, but Nick also paired his three. Ricky in the small blind, Nick in the big blind. So a battle of the blinds here. 130,000 and a call by Nick. Turn card is the 10 of hearts. Ricky limped in the small blind and Nick checked. Neither player was being very aggressive. Ricky decided to lead the flop with two over cards and a straight draw. It's a good move if your opponent doesn't connect to that flop anyway. Most of the time, you're going to take it down. Nick did call. Usually when a player calls, it means they have something. So I'm really curious as to what Ricky's point of betting this turn is. Ricky bets 450000 Action over to Nick. Doing a little math in his head. And Nick gives it up. So Ricky's bet was right. Ricky is going to win that hand. He's 41 years old. He's a professional poker player. I think one of the reasons Nick folded there is he had to think, okay, what happens on the river if I don't improve to my straight? Am I going to call him down with bottom pair? And I think he decided, you know what, I'm not going to call with bottom pair. I'm not a favorite to make my straight. And if this guy's going to bet again on the river, I don't want to just give away these chips on the turn. So he, he had a plan, and he thought it out what he would do in future streets and gave it up, which is something you should always be doing when you're playing a hand of poker. Planning for what you're going to do depending on what different cards come. Blinds are 60,000, 120,000 with a 15K ante. Action on that man, the one seat of Nick. And Nick's gonna go ahead and raise it up here with his queen five, raises to 285,000 out of the small blind. Now to the big blind we go, and Tom. So what you're seeing here is the players are really stepping up their aggression and widening the range of hands they play with due to it being four-handed. You can't wait for a good hand forever, so when it folds to Nick, the small blind, queen high is likely the best hand, as we see it is, so he decides to raise and put pressure on Tom in the big blind. And the flop is ace, jack, tray. And you know, David, when we get down to four-handed, I sometimes look at these players and have to think, some of these guys have never been in this situation before, so it's hard to sharpen your game four-handed if you've never made it this deep in a tournament before. Right. A player with experience is really going to be in an advantageous position when you get down to four-handed and three-handed poker because a lot of players don't know that they have to widen, widen their range of hands. They don't know that most of the time the flops aren't going to connect to either player, so the guy who's being aggressive is going to win the pot. Turn card is the six of clubs. That's why we like to tell a lot of our players to, to get more of that experience, play one of our single table sit and goes, our qualifiers. You start with nine and you play down to the a champion. And that's a good, good opportunity for you to get five handed experience, three handed experience. And most importantly, and we'll talk about this later on in the show, heads up experience. Nick bets a quarter million over to Tom. And right now, Tom's counting out how much it would cost if he wanted to make a bluff because he's not going to call. He just has 10-8, no straight, no straight draw, nothing. He's like, if I were to bluff, what percentage of my stack would it cost me? And is it worth it? And ultimately, he decided it wasn't, and Nick won the pot, which is what I said. Usually, a flop's not going to connect to anyone, so the guy who's being aggressive is going to take down the pot. This is the HPT. I'm James Larson. He's David Williams, professional poker player. Blinds are 60000 120000 with a 15K ante. And action is on Ricky. Looks down at Queen 7. 
He's going to fold. I would be shocked to see Nick not raise the button here. As active as he's been, especially forehanded, when he folds him on the button, he's going to raise almost every time. Very coincidental. Nick has $160,000 in total career earnings. If he wins this tonight, it's $160,000. So he'll go from one sixty dollars to three twenty. dollars It's pretty easy math. And look at Rick, who's going to three bet to $620,000 with ace nine. It's good to see that Rick knows you can't wait for pocket pairs forehanded. And now Nick is all in, and Rick quickly makes the call, and he's going to like this. Wow. Pure domination. Ace nine going up against ace eight. But if you see how quickly Rick three bet and called the four bet shove without any hesitation with just an ace nine, and he's right. Very well played by Rick. Ace nine, ace eight. We go to the flop and right in the window. The eight of hearts. Flop comes out eight, seven, tray. Poker can be so unfair sometimes, David. Yeah, but, you know, Rick's had his fair share of luck also. His eights did take down jacks with a really lucky river to get him in this position. Turn is the jack of hearts. That gives Rick additional outs. A 10 will also fill in his straight so he can win with a 10 or a 9. Or he will be our fourth place finisher. And Rick's starting to figure out his outs here, too. He doesn't want to leave yet. And the river card is the deuce of spades. So that is going to do it for Rick. He's eliminated in fourth place. And, folks, he bought in for just $300. Obviously made his way up through the qualifier system. And now he's going home with just under $45,000. Congratulations to you, Rick. 66 years old, a retired teacher. It was great to have you here at this final table. This is the HPT. It's James Larson joined by professional poker player David Williams. Three players remain here at this nationally televised final table. There's your chip count, and right now Nick in the lead. And it's not surprising. I think Nick's been playing the best. He's been very aggressive, and he's been making the right moves at the right time. Nick told us the reason he's playing this event is he got a very random phone call from a friend that he met playing in Los Angeles. He said, hey, come on out and play. Has that ever happened to you, and then you take the thing down, or you final table, or do well? Uh, you know, usually I'm pretty meticulous about scheduling, and I play tournaments that I've like, planned in advance I'm going to play, so it's never really just kind of a random phone call. And David Williams, you're mainly a tournament player. In fact, you don't play really any cash anymore, do you? No, I've taken kind of a step back. Once I became a parent, it, it became hard to really dedicate the hours that you need to dedicate to being a, a cash game player. I mean, when you're a cash game player, the situation is right and the game is good. You need to stay and play, and I really prefer to spend those hours with my daughter. It's the Tom and Nick show here. So the small blind and big blind flop is two sixes and a seven. Both players check. Now the ten of clubs on the turn. So Tom pairs is ten. Nick checks. Both players check. Go to the river card now. It's the nine of hearts. It's a pretty interesting card. I mean, an eight does make a straight, but it's unlikely Tom would fold his ten thinking that Nick might have the eight because Nick probably would have been betting and the pot's not big enough to where you can make a bet to get him off. So I think this bet is going to be called and as he sets the chips aside, it looks like he is. The bet is 175,000. And Tom is gonna make the call. And he's gonna win the hand that Doyle Brunson made popular, of course, the 10 deuce. So it's kind of interesting. Nick's bet here actually only really gets anyone to fold maybe king high. You're probably going to get called with ace high and anything less, like jack high, most likely paired with the board of 6, 7, 9, 10, either has a pair or a straight, because it's unlikely he's playing jack 3 and jack 5 and jack 4. So Nick's bet, you have to really kind of think about what he was trying to accomplish, and I think he made a mistake there. Three players remain. Third place, by the way, pays 64,676, 97,000 and change for second and your HPT champion tonight. We're going with $159,599. If I won that, David, I'd take you out for a big steak dinner. Well, I'm just going to pitch in a dollar and make it a nice 159.6. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Tom's going to raise with eight tray up to 275,000. Again, folks, at home, it's three-handed poker. Everything changes a little bit. Hand range, all of that. Ricky's going to make the call with his 9-8. When it's three-handed, it's less about the cards and more about the position. Tom is on the button, and when you're on the button, you can play pretty much anything you want three-handed. 
Nick makes the call in the big blind, so all three players going to see this flop. This is final table action coming to you from right outside of Sacramento here in Lincoln, California, Thunder Valley Casino Resort. And the flop is two fours and a queen. So this flop didn't hit anyone. Very unlikely a flop connects with either player. Ricky checks. Nick's going to check. We'll see if Tom, who's last. Now he's going to check as well. A little surprised at that. Right. When you're raising the button with 8-3, you're not raising it because you're trying to connect to the flop. This is a great flop for him to bet again. And, and unless his opponent's connected or they're feeling really feisty, he's most likely going to take it down. But you're not trying to improve your 8-3 to make a pair. Ricky checks. We'll see if Nick wants to get frisky now. I have a feeling Nick's going to take their, their passiveness as a sign of weakness. He's going to bet and probably win this pot. And you just talked about it, David. You know, we're playing three-handed here, so it's all about just playing your opponent. And now he's going to bet 450000 And he's going to win this pot. Neither Ricky nor Tom have any kind of draw that they're drawing to. And if they're up against the king or a queen, they're drawing dead. And both players fold, so Nick will add to his chip stack. He's hoping to be our newest HPT champion and go home with the cash and the title. Make sure to check out our webpage at www.hptpoker.com. If you're going to raise the button with the 8-3, you have to be able to follow through and, and continuation bet on flops, especially flops like Queen 4-4. Four -four. Down to three players. Each player's got to be thinking, man, I'm just so close, so close to being a champion. Made it through this entire field, got to the final table. Now I just got to beat out these two villains that are across from me at this final table. Ricky's going to raise the 260000 with his ace-jack. Now Nick wakes up with an ace two. He's got ace-deuce of diamonds. He makes the call. And Tom finds a pocket pair. Not a big one. Pocket threes. It's the kind of spot with a raise in the call. You can move in, which he does. He does just that. All in with his pocket threes. This is sort of a squeeze play. It puts Ricky in a peculiar spot with Nick behind him to act. But unfortunately, Nick, you know the way he's been playing. If he had a really good hand, he probably would have three bet Ricky. So Ricky doesn't have to really fear him. And he makes the call with ace jack. So it's a race. The ace jack against the pocket threes. I notice whenever Tom's all in, he always grabs his phone out like he's texting a friend or something. You know, maybe he got lucky the one time he did it. And he's just trying to continue to to ride that out at the final table. He's texting his good luck charm. And right in the window is the jack of spades. The flop is jack 10-4. So Ricky goes in the lead now with his jacks. It seems like the trend continues. Frequently when we've had the race, the flop has paired the overcards and it's held up. I think Tom's doing some kind of hand-for-hand -hand reporting there as he was texting again. The turn card is the queen of clubs. So now Tom down to two outs. One of the remaining threes, otherwise he's going to be eliminated in third place. And no tray, it's a deuce, so that is going to do it. Tom is eliminated, going out in third place with 64,676. So that is going to do it for Tom West. Third place, 64,676. Let's go down to the floor where he's standing next to Trichelle. Hey guys, I'm here with Tom West, who was just busted in third place, unfortunately. Tom, I know that you really wanted to win the title, but $65,000 is not bad. How are you feeling right now? Uh, I don't feel great at this moment, but I feel, you know, overall, I'm going to feel very good about how I played. And like you said, winning $65,000 is still a great thing. So, Do you feel like there was a specific thing, uh, you know, whenever you were playing today that you could have changed or done differently? Um, yeah, I'm sure when I look back and think about it, there's definitely things I could have done differently. Maybe played a little bit tighter in certain spots or played a little bit looser in certain spots, but that's kind of how poker is. I mean, there's so many variables and so many different conditions changing constantly that, you know, you're always changing and adapting to how things go, so. Well, I know that you're a really good poker player and I'm sure that we're going to see you back um, on another HPT tour, right? Yes, of course. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you so much, Tom. Welcome back to the HPT, James Larson and David Williams. We are finally heads up. Two players, it's Ricky, it's Nick. They're very close in chips. And David, I say this a lot, it sounds a little cliche, but it's truly anybody's game. Both these players have been playing the best, and I'm not shocked to see these two players heads up. 
and I think either of them would be a worthy champion. Now, you've won titles. You've been final tables. Do you have a certain strategy when you get heads up? I just try to adapt to what my opponent is doing, and then if, uh, if I notice something in particular and I can't figure out a way to do it, I just try to keep them on their toes. All right, well, Nick's going to raise the 285,000. Ricky with A7 makes the call. We know how valuable one ace is, heads up, of course, so he quickly makes the call. And the flop is ace, wow. jack, eight. So, yeah, just a great flop for Ricky with the ace and the diamonds. And Nick flops second pair. And it's, it's really common to suspect your opponent does not have an ace because they didn't three bet you. So it's going to be hard to give Ricky credit for having an ace. This is heads up poker at its best. Nick's going to bet 380,000. He probably thinks he has the best hand right here. It's a great spot for Ricky to just call. Absolutely. Ricky does make the call. So many options for his hand. We go to the turn card now. It's the ten of spades. So Ricky's first to act. See if he leads out. And now with that card, he picks up a straight draw. A nine would give him the dummy end of a straight. And Ricky's going to bet 775,000. Action over to Nick. You know, Ricky has been at this final table before. He got third place the last time we were here, so he's already improved on that. His minimum will be second, but he really wants to win this thing. He told us that beforehand. This means the world to him, not to mention just under $160,000. We go to the river card now. It's the queen of clubs. That is a scary card. Any king and any nine makes a straight, but Ricky is fearless. Ricky trying to take control here. Heads up. It's our first hand with these two players, Ricky and Nick. Second place, by the way, 97,569. Ricky's going to bet 925,000 with the best hand. It's an interesting bet. It's almost like a bluff because you're not really betting for value because not many worse hands are ever going to call you here. I actually like a better play of checking and letting your opponent bet and picking off his bluff if you really don't believe he has a king or a nine. If you think he has one of those hands, then you probably shouldn't be betting anyways. Nick is going to fold, and the winner of the hand is Ricky. All right, the action continues. Blinds are 60,000, 120,000 with a 15K ante. Now, David, your head's up. You've been right in this exact same position. Do the nerves kick up a little bit when it's just you and another person, mano y mano, for the title? Well, it's actually a lot harder for that to happen because you are you don't get those moments where you're not in a hand and you get to start realizing what's happening and freak out. I mean, as soon as you fold, the next hand starts, and you're just right in the action. So you don't really get a moment to breathe. Nick's going to raise to 370000 with his ace-10. And, you know, you're just waiting for that big opportunity. It's kind of back and forth, little small ball. You hope when you pick up a hand that your opponent does and we get him in the middle and hope for the best. Yeah, when I get heads up, I like to chip away at a guy. I mean, I really do enjoy really long, drawn-out heads up, winning a small pot. After just grind a guy down until they have almost nothing. So you're not so much the aggressor when it comes up heads up. Uh, I mean, you can still be the aggressor and still grind the opponent down. It depends on how deep your stacks are and, and how much your opponent is playing back at you. Flop is 10-8 deuce. Wow. Both players pairing that 10. That uh, could spell trouble for Ricky. It's really hard to get away from top pair. I don't think Ricky's going to fold. I think right now he's just got to try to minimize how much he loses. The bet by Nick is 465000 Action over to Ricky. And he's going to make the call. Other than a six, the best thing that could happen for Ricky is an overcard. Well, there's the king of diamonds. Action on Nick. The overcard will allow him either to get away and believe that it improved Nick's hand, or if Nick somehow stops being aggressive, it could allow Ricky to bluff him off his hand. As we both can see the whole cards, Nick's not going anywhere with Ace-10. Man, Nick's going to bet 875000 Oh, and Ricky's not going anywhere, is he? Very quick call. Yeah, he makes the call. He likes his hand. All right, let's see the river. And now we go to the river card. It's the Queen of Diamonds. It's actually a good card for Ricky because there's a very good chance if Nick blasts again. You're beat, and you can't call, which we well, you know he was already beat anyways. 
and it actually might cause Nick to slow down, which he checks. So I think this is probably an easy check for Ricky, too. He'd like to maybe just flip over his hand and see if he is the winner of this hand. And he is going to check. But Nick's going to show that ace of diamonds right behind the 10. I don't think a bluff would have worked there unless it was for all of it. And like I said, when you make a bluff, your story has to make sense. There's no hand that makes sense that would just call, call, and then move all in or bet a huge bet on that river. David Williams joins us this week on the HPT. James Larson is my name. Make sure to check out our webpage at www.hptpoker.com. Now, you've played a few of our events. What did you like most about the HPT, David? My favorite thing was the players. Everybody was just so nice and so friendly, and it was just a really good environment, very welcoming. Yeah, it's like the, uh, the home game, you know, the fishing trip. It's just you and your buddies and some high-stakes poker. And, you know, this thing has evolved, you know. We had these much smaller prize pools when we start now tonight we're playing for 159,000 and change up top second place 97,569 dollars Nick's going to raise to 285,000 with King Jack Ricky picks up a king he doesn't know he's dominated and it looks like he's cutting out a three bet which is going to be disastrous for him unless Nick gives it up so Ricky raises to 850,000 now action on Nick I don't think it's the worst play, but I don't think it's very wise. I think it looks like he's steaming from the previous hand. Nick is going to pick up on this. It seems like he has. He's cutting out a four bet. And a four bet by Nick. And I think Ricky can obviously, he can throw this away now, right, David? He maybe, maybe got caught a little bit here. Right. He was just making a move to try to pick up some chips, knowing that if he gets four bet, he can easily release his hand. If he was committed, he would have just probably raised all in. And Ricky's thinking, I'll, I'll wait for a better opportunity, and Nick wins the hand. We want to thank everybody for watching this exclusive final table coverage coming to you here from Thunder Valley Casino and Resort. It's James Larson and David Williams, and when we come back, we will crown our new HPT champion. Don't go too far. Welcome back to the HPT. James Larson, David Williams. Heads Up Poker continues here from Thunder Valley Casino Resort in Lincoln, California. There's your chip counts. Nick on top, but you know heads up, D-Dubs. Anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, one double up and Ricky would be the chip leader. He's only down a little less than two to one, so the chips would basically flip-flop with a double up. Now, you talk about fatigue, and that's something. These guys have been playing poker all weekend long. You're at the finish line. How do you tell yourself, just, just keep going, man? You just got to love poker. When you love poker, it doesn't matter. You just keep going. doesn't hurt to maybe love money, too, because just under 160000 for first place. Look at Ricky. Picks up two sevens here, raises to 325000 Yeah, I mean, this is a hand you're going to raise with every time, and if you get re-raised, you're probably getting it all in. Heads up. The stacks aren't deep oh, enough. And no. Nick wakes up with pocket eights. Oh, no. Perfect it's timing. disaster for Ricky. An absolute disaster for Ricky. It's unfortunate because if you were to switch the cards, you give Nick Nick the sevens and Ricky the eights, the same thing probably happens. So yep. We're getting them all in as as expected. And, you know, this is poker. It's just a cooler, basically. It's yeah, it's just a, a flat-out cooler. It's very disgusting. You got to feel, if you're Ricky, you got to feel really disappointed. Hey, but hey, hey, let's not count them out yet. There's still a flop, a turn, and a river, and there are still two sevens left in that deck. That is true. We there's have clubs, seen some miracles. There's diamonds. Well, there's no diamonds. But you still, pre-flop, you're disappointed if you see a guy has you pipped like that. Right. The flop is king, queen, five, couple of spades. Neither player has said a word during this heads-up battle. And it could all be over in a matter of two streets. There's the turn card, the four of diamonds. So now only one of the remaining sevens can help Ricky. Otherwise, he'll be eliminated, and we'll have a brand-new HPT champion. The river card is the king of diamonds, and that is going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. We have a new HPT champion. It's the one seat of Nick Skolnick going home with the cash and the title. And in second place is our friend, Ricky. Congratulations to Ricky going home with $97,569. Finishing second, it's not fun, is it, my friend? It isn't, but that payday is pretty nice. Yeah, after a couple of days, you deposit the check, you're sitting on your couch going, all right, I finished second, but a nice little payday for that. But our champion tonight is Nick. He is the star of the show, and he is down to talk with Trishel. Wow, almost $160,000 in the title. How are you feeling right now? 
I'm just in total shock. I mean, everything happened for a reason. Uh, I randomly came here and everything just clicked. I mean, I played well. I'm really proud of the way I played and everything just happened for a reason. So uh, tell me about your strategy coming into the final table today. Basically, just pick my spots, be aggressive at the right time and try not to double up the short stacks and yeah. kind of just pick my spots and be aggressive. Um, so you look so composed. I was watching you play today. I mean, did you think the whole time, I'm going to win this tournament? Uh, in the beginning, I was pretty card dead, actually. Yeah. And then in the end, it picked up, made some good bluffs. Actually, a really good bluff. And after that, it was just done deal. All right, folks, that's going to do it. Nick is your champion from Thunder Valley Casino Resort, and he's going home with just under $160,000. David, we saw a lot of great poker this week. Yeah, I'm inspired. I can't wait to get back on the felt, hopefully at an HBD event soon. Absolutely. It was nice having you in the booth with us. And if you're watching this show and you want to play an HPT event, well, simply log on to our webpage at www.hptpoker.com. Find an event that will work for you, and maybe you'll be playing for the life-changing cash. For David Williams, I'm James Larson, and we'll see you next time on the HPT.